Hello, my name is Jay Ocampo. Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 4 of our Cisco Encore video series about Cisco SD-1 principles and solution design. In this lesson, you will learn about the difference between a traditional wide area network and a software-defined wide area network. We will also discuss the SD-1 solution design and the SD-1 deployment options. What is a traditional WAN? A traditional WAN provides reachability between remote branches or campus to services and applications in the data center. It typically uses MPLS as primary for reliable and secured connectivity to the data center and uses the internet as a backup. The traditional WAN architecture was limited to enterprise, branch, and data center. Once an organization adopts cloud-based applications in the form of SaaS and IaaS, its one architecture experiences an explosion of traffic accessing applications distributed across the globe. These changes have multiple implications for IT. Employee productivity may be compromised by SaaS application performance problems. One expenses can arise with inefficient use of dedicated and backup circuits. IT fights a daily complex battle of connecting multiple types of users with multiple types of devices to multiple cloud environments. What are the disadvantages of the traditional WAN? Number one is expensive bandwidth. Limited bandwidth of expensive private MPLS circuits inhibits rollout and impacts performance of applications. At the same time, private MPLS WAN redundancy is complex to deploy and manage. Traditional one is data center dependent. We know direct access to cloud resources from the branch with a hub and spoke network design. The traffic is backhauled through the enterprise data center with heavy performance penalties. Expect unpredictable application performance with traditional WAN. Application traffic over internet links lacks SLAs for predictable performance. Every change in the application quality of service requires manual changes across the branches and the data center. Infrastructure is complex for traditional WAN. Traditional WAN includes a multitude of single function devices and appliances connected via different WAN links. This infrastructure sprawl causes complexity of branch IT management. Now, let's talk about this shiny new toy called SD-WAN. SD-WAN addresses the current ID challenges. This new approach to network connectivity can lower operational costs and improve resource usage for multi-site deployments. Network administrators can use bandwidth more efficiently and can help ensure high levels of performance for critical applications without sacrificing security or data privacy. With SD-WAN, IT can deliver routing, threat protection, efficient offloading of expensive circuits, and simplification of WAN network management. Let's delve deeper into the business benefits of SD-WAN. Number one is better application experience. SD-WAN provides high availability with predictable service for all critical enterprise application. It provides multiple hybrid active-active links for all network scenarios. It provides dynamically routed application traffic with application-aware routing for efficient delivery and improved user experience. It also improves OPEX, replacing expensive multi-protocol label switching services or MPLS services with more economical and flexible broadband, including secure VPN connections. Number two, it provides more security. It provides application-aware policies with end-to-end -end segmentation and real-time access control. SD-WAN has integrated threat protection, which is enforced at the right place. It secures traffic across broadband internet and into the cloud. It distributes security to the branch and remote endpoints with next-gen firewall, DNS security, and next-gen AV. Optimized cloud connectivity. SD-WAN provides seamless extension of the WAN to multiple public clouds. It provides real-time optimized performance for Microsoft Office 365, Salesforce, and other major SaaS applications. 
It provides optimized workflows for cloud platforms such as Amazon Web Services or AWS and Microsoft Azure. Simplified Management It provides a single centralized cloud-delivered management dashboard for configuration and management of WAN, cloud, and security. It also has template-based zero-touch provisioning features for all locations such as branch, campus, and cloud. Lastly, it provides detailed reporting of application and WAN performance for business analytics and bandwidth forecasting. Cisco currently offers two SD-WAN solutions. The first one is Cisco SD-WAN, which is based on Viftela. This is the preferred solution for organizations that require an SD-WAN solution with cloud-based initiatives. It provides granular segmentation, advanced routing, advanced security, and complex topologies while connecting to cloud instances. The second solution by Cisco is Meraki SD-WAN. This is the recommended solution for organizations that require UTM or Unified Threat Management solutions with SD-WAN functionality or for those that are existing Cisco Meraki customers looking to expand to SD-WAN. UTM is an all-in-one security solution delivered in a single appliance and typically includes the following security features such as firewall, VPN, intrusion prevention, antivirus, anti-spam, and web content filtering. In this section, let's talk about the SD-WAN components based on the preferred solution, which is Viftela. The Cisco SD-WAN solution is software-based. It's a virtual IP fabric network that builds a secure unified connectivity over any transport network or called the underlay. The underlay network is the physical infrastructure for the WAN, such as the internet, MPLS, uh, Metro Ethernet, or your 4G network. The underlay network also provides a service to the overlay network and is responsible for the delivery of packets across networks. The underlay network, as you see here below, is the infrastructure that you have now. The overlay network is the SD-WAN solution that we're going to run on top of the underlay network. The whole point here is that SD-WAN is on top of those existing LAN links and low-cost internet connections, and then we can aggregate them together and use the most reliable method to move data between sites. The Cisco SD-WAN is based on the same routing principles used on the internet for years. If you know how OSPF, BGP, and NAT works, they still do. The goal here is to separate the data plane from the control plane, and that will virtualize much of the routing that used to require dedicated hardware. This separation between control and data plane enables the SD-WAN solution to run over any transport circuit. If you can ping it, we can build a tunnel across it. As long as you have connectivity between sites, like MPLS, an internet, or a point-to-point -point link, we can create tunnels between sites and then engineer the traffic to use those tunnels efficiently. The Cisco V-Bond Orchestrator is a multi-tenant element of the Cisco SD-WAN fabric. V-Bond is the first point of contact and performs initial authentication when devices are connecting to the organization overlay. VVAN facilitates the mutual discovery of the control and management elements of the fabric by using a zero-trust certificate-based allowed list model. Cisco VBON automatically distributes a list of vSmart controllers and the vManage system to the vEdge routers during the deployment process. For situations in which vSmart controllers, the vManage system, or the vEdge routers themselves are behind NAT, the vBand orchestrator facilitates the function of NAT traversal by allowing the learning of public and private IP addresses. The discovery of public and private IP addresses allows connectivity to be established across the public network like Internet or 4G and private network like MPLS and point-to-point. -point. The vBond orchestrator itself should reside in the public IP space or on the private IP space with one-to-one -one NAT so that all remote, especially internet-only sites can reach it. 
When tied to DNS, this reachable VBOND IP address allows for a zero-touch deployment. VBOND should be highly resilient. If VBOND is down, no other device can join the overlay. When deployed as an on-premise solution by the customer, it is the responsibility of the customer to provide adequate infrastructure resiliency. And lastly, VBOND can run in single or multi-tenant mode. Cisco vManage is on the management plane and provides a single pane of glass for day zero, day one, and day two operations. Cisco vManage multi-tenant web scale architecture meets the needs of enterprises and service providers alike. Cisco vManage has a web-based GUI with role-based access control. Some key functions of Cisco vManage include centralized provisioning, centralized policies and device configuration templates, and the ability to troubleshoot and monitor the entire environment. You can also perform centralized software upgrades on all fabric elements, which include vEdges, vBond, vSmart, and vManage itself. vManage should run in high resiliency mode, because if you lose vManage, you lose the management plane. vManage supports multi-tenant mode in addition to the default single tenant mode of operation. You can use vManage programmatic interfaces to enable DevOps operations and to also extract performance statistics collected from the entire fabric. You can export performance statistics to external systems or to the Cisco vAnalytics tool for further processing and closer examination. Cisco SD-WAN software provides a REST API, which is a programmatic interface for controlling, configuring, and monitoring the Cisco SD-WAN devices in an overlay network. You can access the REST API through the vManage web server. The control plane is the centralized brain of the solution, establishing Overlay Management Protocol, or OMP, which peers with all the vEdge routers. Control plane policies such as service chaining, traffic engineering, and per VPN topology are implemented by the control plane. The goal of the control plane is to dramatically reduce complexity within the entire fabric network. While no network data is forwarded by the control plane itself, Connectivity information is distributed from the control plane to all vEdge routers, orchestrating the secure data plane of the fabric. Cisco vSmart controllers provide scalability to the control plane functionality of the Cisco SD-WAN fabric. The vSmart controllers facilitate fabric discovery by running OMP between themselves and the vEdge routers. The vSmart controller acts as a distribution point to establish the data plane connectivity between the edge routers. This information exchange includes service LAN side reachability, transport WAN side IP addressing, IPsec encryption keys, site identifiers, and so on. Together with the vEdge routers, vSmart controllers act as a distribution system for the pertinent information required to establish the data plane connectivity directly between the vEdge routers. All control plane updates are sent from vEdges to vSmart in a route reflector fashion. vSmart then reflects those updates to all remote vEdge sites. This is how vEdge learns about all available tunnel endpoints and user prefixes in the network. Since the control plane is centralized, you are not required to build control channels directly between all vEdge routers. vSmart controllers also distribute data plane and application-aware routing policies to the vEdge routers for enforcement. Control policies acting on the control plane information are locally enforced on the vSmart controllers. These control plane policies can implement service chaining and various types of topologies and generally can influence the flow of traffic across the fabric. The use of a centralized control plane dramatically reduces the control plane load traditionally associated with building large-scale IPsec networks, solving the n-squared complexity problem. The vSmart controller deployment model not only solves the horizontal scale issue, 
but also provides high availability and resiliency. vSmart controllers are often deployed in geographical dispersed data centers to reduce the likelihood of control plane failure. When delivered as a cloud service, vSmart controllers are redundantly hosted in the Cisco cloud. When deployed as an on-premise solution by the customer, the customer must provide infrastructure resiliency. The OneEdge router functions as the data plane. The VEdge routers provide a secure data plane with remote VEdge routers, a secure control plane with vSmart controllers, and implement data plane and application aware policies. Because all data within the fabric is forwarded in the data plane, performance statistics are exported from the VEdge routers. VEdge routers are available in both physical and virtual form factors, supports zero-touch deployment, and use traditional routing protocols like OSPF, BGP, and VRRP for integration with networks that are not part of the WAN fabric. Cisco VEdge routers are the data plane elements of the Cisco SD-WAN fabric. Cisco VEdge routers are essentially WAN-edge routers that are positioned at every site at which the SD-WAN fabric must be extended. VEdge routers are responsible for encrypting and decrypting application traffic between the sites. The VEdge routers establish a control plane relationship with the vSmart controller to exchange pertinent information that is required to establish the fabric and learn centrally provisioned policies. Data plane and application aware routing policies are implemented on the VEdge routers. VEdge routers export performance statistics and alerts and events to the centralized vManage system for a single point of management. VEdge routers use standards-based OSPF and BGP routing protocols for learning reachability information from service landside interfaces and for brownfield integration with non-SD-WAN sites. VEdge routers have very matured full-stack routing implementation, which accommodates simple, moderate, and complex routed environments. For Layer 2 redundant service landside interfaces, VEdge routers implement Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, or VRRP, as first sub-redundancy protocol, which can operate on a per-VLAN basis. VEdge routers can be brought online in a full zero-touch deployment fashion or by requiring administrative approval. Zero-touch deployment relies on the use of signed certificates installed in the onboard TPM or temper-proof module to establish a unique router identity. One of the keys to a software-defined networking solution is the visibility into the network and the applications running over that network. The Cisco SD-WAN solution has great automation and analytics that give administrator valuable insights into the SD-WAN operations. The vAnalytics platform provides graphical representation of the performance of your entire Cisco SD-WAN overlay network over time and enables you to drill down to the characteristics of a single carrier, tunnel, or application at a particular time. The vAnalytics dashboard serves as an interactive overview of your network and an entrance point for more details. The dashboard displays information for the last 24 hours. You have an option to drill down and select various time periods for which to display data. The vAnalytics platform displays application performance with quality of experience or VQOE value. The VQOE value ranges from 0 to 10, with 0 as the worst performance and 10 as the best. The, v the vAnalytics platform calculates the VQOE value based on latency, loss, and jitter, customizing the calculation of each application. Here are some of the vAnalytics features. vAnalytics provide real-time information for failure correlation, cross-customer benchmarking, and application performance scores. It enables future planning based on intelligent data like application and bandwidth forecasting, branch expansion analysis, and policy change what-ifs. 
And lastly, it provides a quality of experience score for applications that are running on your network to help identify how your application is performing based on recent changes made on your network. So there's many options when it comes to deploying the controllers. The first one is that your company can deploy the three controller types such as vManage, vSmart, and vBond as will be required by your environment. This can be hosted on your own on-premise or private cloud. The second option is through an MSP or the managed service provider. The recommended approach is through the Cisco cloud. On this option, the controllers will be deployed in the Cisco cloud, which is entirely managed by Cisco. So controllers, of course, must be IP reachable, right, from the edge devices and from other controllers. The actual location is technically flexible as long as the controllers are hosted entirely in the cloud, which is the recommended model. Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services are directly supporting and integrated into the solution. You can deploy in single or multiple availability zones. You can also deploy controllers entirely on premise, you know, that right column over there. You can use public and private transport networks, but you must consider some specific design issues. And we could also do a mix of the two deployment models. It's always, it's important to point that the controllers can reach each other on an IT level and the VH devices can reach the controllers, right? So because they're going to need to talk to each other regardless of where they are. If they're in the cloud, we're obviously going to have to have internet connections to the controller. If they're on premises, we can have private connections to the cloud. So if you have an MPLS a CAC connection only for a site and it cannot connect to the cloud enabled controller, but we can connect to our data center, we can connect to the vSmart and vBond there. In this lesson, you learned about the difference between a traditional wide area network and the software defined wide area network. We also talk about the SD WAN solution design and the SD WAN components, which are the vManage, vSmart, vBond, vEdge, and the vAnalytics. We also spoke about the SD WAN controller deployment options, such as managed by Cisco Cloud Operations, MSP Operations Team, or your own enterprise IT.